Hi, this is T Weeder Tool back with you uh, with a few more tips on maintenance issues with the Honda Ridgeline. Today we'll be doing a service maintenance for the Honda Ridgeline. This is a 2010 and I was getting the maintenance code A13. Looking on page 324 of the 2010 owner's manual, uh, it indicates that the maintenance minder code A indicates that it's time to replace engine oil. The 1 indicates it's time to rotate the tires and the 3 indicates that it's time to replace transmission and transfer case fluid. So I've got all the uh, fluids and I'm going to get ready to go to work on uh, taking care of those issues. The engine oil, it's still indicating I have 15%, uh, but as long as I get the, I'm going to have the thing jacked up and everything, I think I'll just do uh, everything all at the same time. The 2010 Ridge line and earlier models uh, came with Z1 Honda ATF, automatic transmission fluid, in the uh, transmission case. The new Hondas and what they're recommending now is uh, Honda transmission fluid, the ATF D1. And this fluid is supposed to be uh, better for especially uh, cold weather conditions, helping the transmission to shift more smoothly. Uh, we're in Minnesota and actually yesterday, our uh, low temperature yesterday was minus 27 degrees Fahrenheit, so it was very cold. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually, uh, even though it calls for a about a 3.3 quart uh, transmission fluid change at this time, I'll be doing the three times change. And what that means is I'll, uh, I'll change out 3.3 quarts of transmission fluid today, drive about 40 miles, and then I'll do it again, drive about 40 miles and do it about a, th a third time. And the reason for that is the transmission case holds uh, somewhere around nine to 11 quarts, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but you're not able to drain all of it at the same time. So uh, you need to uh, do it three times and that way you'll get about 90% of the transmission fluid out and, and change it out with the, D, the DW1. I checked uh, pricing for the transmission fluid at my local, uh, well, I don't have a local, but it's about an hour away, the Honda dealer, and it's, uh, it was running about nine bucks a quart. I found this online, I got a whole case since I'm going to be doing the three times uh, change and I got a whole case for about $90 and that included delivery so that was uh, a little more economical for me. For the transfer case, uh, what it requires is a gear oil and uh, this uh, Valvoline 80W90 is, uh, is uh, one of the oils that is uh, adequate for that uh, gear oil. It'll only take about a half a quart of the gear oil. Um, so this stuff will work for that. I think it, the manual says you could go down to a 75W90 also, but uh, this is what my local uh, automotive store carried and it's acceptable, so I'm going to be using that. Before you drain any fluids in any vehicle, you should make sure that you can uh, remove your uh, the filler cap or the uh, the the plug that uh, covers your fill hole before you drain the fluid out or you could run into some problems. So what I did is uh, in the Honda, I, the transmission filler uh, point is right here. It's kind of on the driver's side right in front of the uh, where the driver would be sitting. And if you go back here, you can see there's the um, master cylinder uh, or the brake fluid uh, reservoir. And you go straight down behind that and if you look down there, you can see I'd already removed it just to make sure I could. Uh, behind that hose, you can see the hole where the uh, transmission, uh, where you refill it. And you'll need a, a long neck funnel to, to reach that or some kind of tubing where you could pump it in. But that's the hole. And what I did, since it's, uh, I guess, earlier models, that hose wasn't in the way. It was very accessible to get to that, to that bolt. Uh, what I did is I have some air tools here and I put a bunch of extensions on uh, so I could reach it from up above. So otherwise it would be very difficult to get to. And just for your information also, uh, the, uh, the transmission filler nut, that's a 17 millimeter 
that's a 17 millimeter nut so uh, it's kind of hard to get down there to try different sizes so I thought I'd throw that in there. I'm going to mention uh, something that came in really handy. It's a, a tip that I came across. I, in, in the past when I rotated tires and so forth I always uh, jacked up the vehicle uh, from the sides at the designated uh, jacking points right behind the front wheel and right in front of the, the rear wheel. But I recently found out I have a high lift floor jack. This can go up about 21 inches. And I recently came across some information indicating that there's a center point jack on these vehicles that uh, makes it a lot easier. You can just jack it up and then put it on stands and you can see it right there. It's sort of right in the middle. There's a metal uh, piece that protrudes down. It's got a hole you know, in the side of it. And that's the front center point jack point. So you could put your, the saddle of your uh, floor jack into that and then lift the entire front end. It'll get both tires up off the ground. And then you can put your jack stands uh, underneath the front jack points and remove your jack. And then you get, uh, you get good lift. I just bought these at, uh, I got them from Harbor Freight. I don't do too much buying at Harbor Freight just because I sometimes find the quality is not what I'm looking for. But these are very good quality. These are six ton high lift uh, jack stands. So they're very sturdy and they'll keep the, the Honda, to, to get the tires off the ground, you gotta get it up, the sides up about 16 inches off the ground. And these have enough uh, clearance for that. There's also a center jack point at the rear of the vehicle, and you can kind of see it right there. It's uh, kind of a piece of metal that protrudes down, and um, it's got also got a hole on one side. It's kind of an L-shaped bracket, and uh, they say that that's uh, sufficient to, to jack the entire back end of the vehicle up. And again, for rotating tires, this comes in handy, or for doing your rear differential change, and you can see one of the uh, ports up there for the rear differential. Uh, I did that earlier, so I don't have to do it. The drain port is down below. You can see the it requires a 3 8 inch uh, drive, just a square drive to go in there. And then the up above there, you can see the uh, that's the fill hole up above. And again, make sure you can get that fill the fill hole uh, plug out before you drain your your fluid, or you're going to be stuck uh, until you can figure that one out. But that's the center jack point for the rear, and then again, once you get it up, you can put your uh, jack stands underneath the rear uh, jacking points to support the vehicle. Okay, I've got the vehicle uh, jacked up. All four tires are up and jack stands uh, on all four of the uh, jacking points on the side to keep it up uh, stable and secured. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned earlier too is before you jack the tires completely off the ground it helps to loosen the lug nuts just a little bit. Um, I was using uh, air to remove my lug nuts so it wasn't as big a factor and I had the brake, the parking brake set and the car is in gear. Uh, but uh, if you're using a uh, four-way wrench or something like that you, it'll be easier if you lift or if you leave the tires a little bit on the ground before and just loosen the lug nuts a little bit before you lift it all the way off so the wheels don't spin on you. Also I mentioned that uh, the lug nut uh, size is a 21 millimeter so if you're using a socket to do that uh, 21 millimeters the size you need for that. Okay we're going to move under the car now and I'm going to show you how to uh, drain the transmission case and then also how to drain and fill the uh, transfer case. Um, some, it changed in 2009. Uh, it used to be that, uh, here's the front of the vehicle obviously. I'm laying on the ground and just about ready to kind of slide under it. But it used to be that the drain for the uh, transmission was over on this side. And it was indicated or marked with a, a blue coloring on the end of the of the drain bolt. Um, in 2009 they moved it and now it's over on this side and you can kind of, let's see if I can swing, swing over here a little bit and sort of see it there. It's again it's got a 3 8 inch uh, square so you just use a, uh, a 3 8 inch uh, uh, socket driver on there 
to loosen that up. And I've heard that these can be pretty tight. You might, I've got air tools, so I might not have any problem, but you might need a breaker bar, some kind of, uh, some people talk about, you know, getting the socket on there and then using their foot to break it loose. But this is for the, the transmission drain right here. And it is not colored blue anymore. Again, it's on the passenger side now, and you can kind of see it. It's not too far back. If you go from the jacking point and go straight back about, oh, maybe 10 inches or so, 8 inches, it's, uh, it's back from there. And then the transfer case is this uh, piece of the transmission right back here. And there's two pieces, or there's a drain and a fill on that. The, dr the fill is up above here. You can kind of see it. And again, that uses the 3 8 inch uh, socket driver to release that. And that one I, I hear is, can be pretty, pretty tough to bust loose the first time. And then the drain is right at the bottom, right back here uh, on, the same, on that same case. So again, before you drain this, make sure you can, you can uh, bust open the, the filler so you'll be able to put new, new fluid in there. Uh, before it's all drained out. So I'm going to get to work and uh, start letting that drain and probably get going. I mentioned while I'm down here too, I don't, I can't really get to it or, or see it very good here, but I'm going to do an oil change too. It's right over here, right in front of the where the muffler makes this curve here. It's actually marked. It says right on there, it says engine oil. And that's the drain for the engine oil uh, right there. And then the uh, oil filter on these is really easy to get to also. And I'll show you that when I maybe when I get to that point. Okay, I just uh, removed the transmission uh, drain plug, and here it is. And you can see the end of it's really black. And what it is is there's a magnetic uh, protrusion on the end of that to gather any uh, shavings or anything that might uh, come from the transmission during the break-in period and so forth. So that's very common to have uh, those black shavings on there. And I've got it draining. Before I did that, I also I went to work, and you can see it's uh, draining there. I went to work and uh, broke loose the fill plug on the transfer case. And uh, maybe it's because I have the truck up in the air, I was able to get under there and get plenty of leverage. But I didn't have any problem at all uh, doing that. But you can see the, the gunk on here. It's pretty... Pretty gunky, but anyway, so I'm going to let that drain for quite a while, and uh, then I'll come back and, and uh, close her all up, drain the transfer case, and then, and then start filling it. Here's the uh, transmission drain plug after I cleaned it off. I just took a paper towel and wiped all the gunk off it real good, and now it's uh, the magnet's all clean, so that's ready to go back in. There is a crush washer on this and some of the other uh, bolts. If you have a Honda dealer close by, um, you might want to replace those crush washers. They recommend it. I usually don't and I've never had a problem with leakage. I just keep an eye on it and uh, like I say I'm going to be doing this one a three time fill and drain so I'm not going to put a new crush washer on at least not the, for the very first two. Okay I got all the tires rotated all but uh, the, the right front one I still have that one off. Um, one thing I'd mentioned too uh, when I rotate mine a lot of people just put the the rear one on the front and the front one on the rear on the same side. Uh, in order to get the most even wear, I usually put my front tires on the back side on the opposite side that I took them off. Uh, that is unless you have directional tires. The Michelins that come on the Ridgeline are not directional. Uh, if you had directional tires, they'd have a, an arrow on the sidewall indicating which way they need to roll. Um, but anyway, like I say, it's up to you, but I do that just to get the most even wear uh, all the way around and get the most life out of my tires. The uh, reason I leave the right front uh, tire off, uh, it's very easy to get to the oil filter if you're just doing an oil change, but since I'm doing a tire rotation anyway, you can see the oil filter right there. It's right behind the tire, and it's very accessible from underneath too. Uh, but as long as I had the tire off, I thought, you know, while I'm doing an oil change, and you can see the oil, uh, I've got the oil draining down below uh, right now. So as soon as the oil's done draining, I'll uh, pull off the filter and replace that. I've got uh, new uh, four or five quarts. It takes about four and a half quarts of synthetic oil. And I just buy the, the least expensive as long as it meets the API spec uh, that the manual uh, calls for. Uh, this was uh, about three... 
about four bucks a quart. Uh, the mobile one uh, is about almost eight bucks a quart. So uh, your choice. And then I, I buy a, a genuine Honda filter to put on it. And that way I get just about 10,000, almost 10,000 miles between oil changes. Uh, but I decided to mention that uh, if you're doing a rotation at the same time, you might want to just uh, do the oil filter so you don't have to lay on your back and, and get after it. I just finished uh, draining the oil and putting the new oil and the new filter on. You can see the filter there. And now I've got the uh, transfer case draining. That's got the, uh, the gear oil in it. And there's only about a half a quart. And that looks like it's done draining now. So I'll get to that here shortly. Uh, what I'm going to do to refill the transfer case, I don't know if you remember where the, the higher... Uh, plug was back there but it's kind of tucked up into a tough spot let's see if we can see if I can see it up there from here but it's uh, yeah you can't really even see it it's it's really tucked up there what some people say they do is they take the gear oil here and they can try and wedge the bottle up and squeeze a, you know half a quart through the nozzle or some people just take some plastic uh, tubing and put it on the nozzle and then squeeze it in. What I did is uh, on Amazon for about $5 you can get these pumps and uh, I've used this on the rear differential to change that a different pump because I don't want to contaminate the, the fluids but I, I just pay about 5 bucks, get a pump and uh, then you can put the uh, plastic tube up there and just you know pump away until it starts to overflow out the fill hole and then you know it's full. Um, I've got, actually I've got a couple, that's the pump I used for the rear differential back there, the bigger one. And then I've got a couple of these. They're so inexpensive and rather than trying to you know, worry about contaminating different fluids and flushing the pumps out and stuff like that, I just bought a couple of them. So I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to get under there now and uh, refill the gear oil. Okay, I'm just about done. I think I've uh, got the transfer case uh, filled up. I've been uh, pumping it with, uh, like I says, it takes about a uh, half a quart of the gear oil. And I don't know, I use this pump system, and I don't know how you'd ever fit a bottle up there, even with a, with a tube. One thing I wish I'd have done is maybe warmed up the, uh, the oil. It's a little bit thick, and it uh, took quite a while to pump it all in there, or to pump a half a quart, but now it's starting to drip out. So that uh, indicates to me that... The, it's fill up to the filler line here and just again uh, so there's there's the filler hole and I can see, like you can see there's hardly any space in here where you could uh, fit anything uh, again uh, the drain hole is right here you can see that uh, the filler hole is actually marked it's stamped on the back side you can't the tubes in the way right now but it says hypoid gear oil back there so it's uh, stamped for that uh, and then once again uh, here's the uh, Transmission drain, right, you know, just up from there a little bit. And back over here, you can kind of actually see where it's stamped. There's the engine oil oil drain. So it's it's all right in here. I don't think, uh, if I hadn't jacked this up and uh, had, had the vehicle up in the air, it would have been darn near impossible to uh, get to all this and access it and everything. But it's working fine. So now I'll just finish this up, uh, put the plug back in, and then go fill the... Uh, uh, the transmission case with the uh, automatic transmission fluid. Okay, everything's the, the car's back down on its tires. Tires have been rotated, the oil's been changed, the filter's been changed, uh, the gear oil, the transfer case gear oil has been changed, and now I'm going to fill the transmission uh, case. And what I'm going to use for that, I've got this. If you can see it, if I can get back far enough, but it's a long neck funnel. Hopefully that'll reach all the way down there. And then it calls for about, on a, on a change like this, about three and a third quarts of the ATF transmission fluid. So, see if I can get in there and uh, reach the filler hole with that funnel. Well, I'm all done. And I think uh, by doing this myself, as opposed to having a dealer rotate my tires, change my oil, uh, do the uh, transmission fluid and the transfer gear oil, I probably saved myself, uh, oh, I don't know, probably at least $300. Uh, I had in my uh, ATF fluid, I've got about $90 tied up, about uh, 
one e box tied up, 25 maybe between my oil and filter, and then about $10 in those pumps that I used. I'll tell you what, the most challenging uh, part of the whole thing was getting that uh, transmission fill bolt back on. Um, you can kind of see it down there. I don't know if you can or not, but anyway, what I ended up doing, and I'll tell you this, uh, here's a, it's a telescopic, I don't know if you can see it very good, uh, it's a magnetic telescopic uh, tool, re or nut retriever basically. And what I did is I put this on the, I put a little grease on the crush washer on the fill bolt to keep the crush washer from falling off. I just put a little grease and then put it, uh, pushed it against the bolt and it held on. And then I took this magnetic thing and I got the uh, bolt lowered over the hole because it's very hard to get your fingers down there. And then I actually was able to get the magnet onto the flange of the bolt and uh, turn it. And I got it threaded on just loosely using this magnet and then went back with the uh, socket and tightened it up the rest of the way. So that's a little tip off to try and remember next time I do it too. Uh, I don't know, it's just so hard to get your fingers down there and uh, get get a hold of that bolt. So, And one thing I noticed too, the bolt, uh, right on the top of it, you can't see it there obviously, but uh, it says ATF, so you know that you're on the right spot if it says ATF. Well, I hope you found that uh, some of this stuff handy. Uh, I couldn't have done it without my uh, jack stands. They were, I think I spent about 80 bucks uh, for two pair of those at Harbor Freight on some kind of a sale. And uh, well worth it. So that made the whole thing much easier. And next time around, I'll, I'll do the uh, three-time change. And next time, I don't even think I'll have to jack it up. I can probably do it all uh, with the car sitting on the ground. So there you are from Tea Weeder. I hope you uh, had this, found this helpful. And uh, like I said, if you own any property on the water and you battle with weeds, check it out. Thanks for watching. P.S. I just thought of one more thing I should probably mention. Once you've finished all of your uh, maintenance, if you, uh, you need to reset the maintenance minder. If you had the work done at your dealer, they would do it, but uh, you can do it yourself also. If you look in your owner's manual uh, for the 2010 ridge line, it's on page 316. Under and it says resetting the engine oil life display and this will actually it'll reset the maintenance codes for uh, Other work that you might have had to do too, but it's very simple uh, As it says it just you turn the ignition switch just to the on position You don't start the car which is just uh, two clicks from from the off position and Then press the trip reset button and hold it for about 10 seconds um, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, i got to back up here. Press the select button repeatedly or until the engine oil life uh, percentage is displayed. Then press the trip reset button, hold it for about 10 seconds, and the engine oil life or it, and any maintenance code items will begin to blink. And when they start to blink, then release the button. It doesn't tell you that in the manual. I wrote that in. And then press it again. Press the trip reset button again and hold it for about 5 seconds and that will reset all the codes and set the oil life back to 100%. So after you've done that, you're all done and you can uh, uh, go to work driving your, your vehicle. Um, make sure to check the levels after you've run it a little bit. Make sure your oil level and your uh, automatic transmission fluid level uh, are up to where they need to be. And you can find uh, information on how to check those in your manual also.